page friends, do you worry about giving constructive feedback to creative writing and poetry pieces that your students have so obviously put their hearts and souls into? I know that I do, even going into year 17 of teaching, and that's because we care so incredibly much. But when we worry about students' emotional reaction to our feedback, we can actually shortchange them in improving as writers. So. I want to, in this video, share with you some practical tips for responding to students and their creative writing pieces so that you can keep moving them forward as writers. I want you to feel as comfortable responding to creative writing assignments as analysis-based writing or argumentative writing assignments so that you can help student writers grow without deflating their fragile egos. So first, let's talk about setting the stage for writing feedback. I think that it is super important to remember the feeling associated with having someone else read our work. There's a vulnerability there, right? I remember back when I was a student, it was always a mixture of anticipation and dread because I wondered if my instructor would like what I had written. Would my grade reflect the time and the effort I put into the assignment? And most importantly, would I let the teacher down? A couple of things before we discuss how to give constructive feedback. Um, I think that it is important, first of all, to be clear with students up front about the skills that you're looking for in a creative writing assignment. Don't let it be a free for all. I want you to front load with examples and use creative writing exercises so that students can practice the skills. And then when it comes time for students to write, they will know what they're expected to do as writers and you have something to anchor your feedback into. At the same time, it's important to focus on feedback during the writing process. This allows our response to be as readers rather than evaluators. And finally, I think that it makes a big difference when you model your own creative process for the students. So I am writing right alongside my students because I want to show students that writing is messy and imperfect. If I go through the same process as them, the more my classroom dynamic shifts from teacher-centered to student-centered and collaborative and more relaxed and low-key. So if you're wondering how to give constructive feedback to students, my tip is to ask them to give feedback to you first. It's incredibly humbling, but important. And I want you to remember with your feedback that less is more. I've said this before and I'll say it again and again and again. Students do not care about our carefully worded paragraphs. They want to be seen, they want to be heard, and they want to be able to understand what they can do to improve and have time to apply the feedback and actually improve. This means that feedback should be direct, specific, and actionable. And we're responding as readers, again, not evaluators. This means that we're going to leave a manageable amount of feedback to build a student's momentum so that they can keep writing and keep improving. So here are some strategies for how to give constructive feedback to students. First off, you can choose to only mark the lines that you as a reader love the most. You can highlight them, you can underline them, you can put a star on the margin. And then I want you to choose a couple of these lines to comment on. What did you notice? What did you like? What did you realize or want to know more about as a reader? Next, you can focus on the skills taught in class. So if you taught characterization and concrete details, give feedback specifically on those elements and ask students as a part of your feedback to revisit resources, screencasts, examples to review the skills that they need to review. Next, you can focus on moments of clarity and confusion. Where did you as a reader feel a connection or realize something important and have an aha moment. Where were you confused? This is a type of yin and yang feedback in which you kind of give them both sides of the spectrum. So another thing to think about here, you can find something specific that you liked and enjoyed and explain why and how. Maybe it's a bit of figurative language or a vivid image. And then you can pair this with a suggestion for where the writer can continue to work on this same skill. Essentially, this is like saying, say, here you did this thing that I liked and enjoyed. Can you do more of that over here? Or as a reader, it seemed to me like your intent was this, this, this when you wrote this. I'm wondering if you can make this clearer over here when you wrote this. Next, you can talk about the highest level of skill mastery you can observe. Find an example of incredible success and talk about why or how it was successful. And then what is the most important skill on the other hand that still needs to be developed and find a place where the student can begin working on that skill. 
Continuing with the Yenye feedback, where were you most engaged or interested in the piece? Leave a quick note about what captured your attention, and then where were you the least engaged or interested? This type of teacher feedback encourages revision because you're giving students both sides of the coin. Next, you can be curious. You can read a draft and ask only questions. It is a type of feedback, constructive feedback, that students love to hate because it makes them think. I ask my students to read my questions, respond to them, and revise. And this establishes feedback as a two-way conversation rather than a one-way lecture, which is super important and teaches students that they have a voice in the feedback process. Next, you can have students direct your feedback by initiating the feedback. They can ask you questions about their work. Or you can ask students to reflect on how or where they've demonstrated the skills you've taught in class or the goals they've set for themselves. Then the key is you are simply reading through their work and responding to their comments or their questions and sharing your thoughts and suggestions as a reader. Finally, you can use a writer's workshop model in which you conference with the students about their work. You can train students to lead in these conversations if you choose the one-on-one -on -one model or you can form writing circles in which you provide students with examples of constructive feedback before asking them to take turns reading their work out loud and soliciting feedback from their group members. Here you can float between writing groups and join the conversations as needed, and you can also have students reflect on the feedback that they received after the pact. So I hope that I have helped you to think more about how to give constructive feedback to creative writers. As we become purposeful in our responses to students, I think the benefit is that we streamline our own systems and processes, which allows us to feel better about the feedback that we're giving and also the amount of time it takes to provide this feedback. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be sure to catch me in the next video. I will see you next time.